Hello and welcome to the 3D Printing Canada Ender 5 BL Touch Installation Guide. Let's quickly go over the parts required. You will need a stock Genuine BL Touch, a set of 1,500mm extension cables, four female to female DuPont connectors and one female to male DuPont connector, an Arduino Uno, the standard toolkit that came with your printer, a pin 27 breakout board, a 3D printed mounting bracket, which you can find linked in the description below, the clippers that came with your printer, a star head screwdriver, a USB A type cable, and finally some zip ties. Let's start by flipping the printer on its side so that we can gain access to the electronics enclosure. We will have to use one of our Allen keys to remove the four screws holding the bottom on. Once the bottom comes off, be careful because there's a fan connected to the motherboard. Simply disconnect the fan. Now you can set the cover aside. The 1500mm extensions comes with a 3-pin connector for the Z end stop. This isn't going to work with our printer which has 2-pin connectors. Take your clippers and put them inside the empty pin slot of the connector. Clip the top and the bottom of that pin slot. Carefully break the rest of the pin slot free. Make sure that there's no edges or shavings on the side. The pin 27 board makes a big difference in this installation. It makes things pretty bulletproof. Orient the connector so that the orange signal, red 5 volt, and brown ground connector all line up with the respective labeled pins on the pin 27 board. After flashing the bootloader on the printer, it's time to install the pin 27 board. Disconnect the LCD connector. Plug the pin 27 board in its place. After that, plug the LCD connector into the top of the pin 27 board. Piece of cake, no soldering, heat shrink, or mess. Plug the Z end stop connector into the Z slot that is currently occupied by the limit switch wire. Please note that we made a small but important mistake while filming this. The black and white wires have to be the reverse of what is shown here. Use a flathead screwdriver, take the pins out of the connector, and switch them around before installing them. With all the wiring and flashing done, we can start routing the BL Touch cable. Fish it through the opening in the back of the box where the rest of the wires are going. At this point, we can button up the bottom, plug the case cooling fan back in, and screw the bottom on. To continue routing the BL Touch wire, we have to snip any zip ties along the cable chain leading to the extruder. Note that this customer has a direct drive system installed. The procedure will be the same for a stock Ender 5. Take the cable management sleeve and bunch it up. This will make the radius larger. Then you can fish the BL Touch wires through. Now it's time to unpackage the BL Touch and assemble the bracket. The BL Touch kit itself consists of the BL Touch, a couple of springs, and a bag of hardware. In the hardware bag, there are two nuts and two bolts that we require for the mounting process. Because we have our own extension cable, we won't be needing the one on the BL Touch. Very carefully remove it from the device. Now we can screw in our BL Touch to the bracket. Take one screw and fish it up from the bottom. Then put a spring on. Push the screw and the assembly up through the correct hole in the bracket. I like to put some pressure on with a screwdriver until the bolt pops out of the top of the bracket, then I thread the nut on by hand. Notice on the BL Touch, the connector is facing the inside of the bracket assembly. Repeat the same process for the other screw. Tighten the screws down until there's about 3 or 4 millimeters of clearance between the bottom of the bracket and the top of the BL Touch. Make sure that it's even on both sides. 
To install the BL Touch, first we have to remove the two screws holding in the front fan shroud. We're going to take those two screws and pre-thread them in the holes of the BL Touch mounting bracket. At this point, we can connect the BL Touch to our extension cable. Make sure you push it through in the correct orientation, with the little silver tabs on the connector facing outwards. Once you have passed it through the cable management slot, very carefully push it in. Don't put too much force on. Line up the screws in the BL Touch with the holes of the fan shroud. This whole assembly will screw nicely back into place onto the X-axis gantry. Take your time and don't pinch any wires. You can see that the BL Touch here on final inspection is leaning a bit to one side. I'm going to take my screwdriver and adjust it. If you find that BL Touch is leaning to the left or to the right, adjusting the position of the springs will help that. Time for some cable management. Push your gantry all the way to the left hand side, then the front of the printer. This will tell us exactly how much slack we need to leave in the cable for normal operation. Replace the zip ties that you had cut off previously. Plug the USB cable into the computer and into the printer. You can flash Marlin using instructions in the description below. When you boot up the machine, you should see the LCD light up and you should see the BL Touch do a couple test plunges. Time to start homing our printer. Click the select button, go to motion, then go to auto home. You should see the printer start to home itself. A good idea for the first run is to touch the BL Touch plunger with your finger before it reaches the bed. You should see the plunger get sucked up and the bed will stop. This will ensure that your wiring is done correctly. After that, auto home again to complete the cycle. Click the select wheel again, go to motion, move axis, move Z, move by one millimeter, and move the Z down to zero. After we're at zero, go back to the move axis, back to motion, back to the main menu, and then down to configuration. Now we can set our probe Z offset. The default value is zero. Take a piece of paper and put it underneath your nozzle. Start moving the probe Z offset into the negative range. This will make the nozzle get closer to the bed. While you're doing this, move the paper back and forth until you feel the nozzle catching it. You should feel a bit of roughness from the nozzle rubbing on the paper, but it shouldn't be low enough that you can't move the paper at all. If this is your first experience, better safe than sorry, leave it so it's just rubbing lightly. After the value is set, scroll down to store settings and press the button. Let's home the printer again. To make sure the probe Z offset is set correctly, take a piece of paper and put it back under the nozzle, then go to the motion menu and move Z down to zero again. When Z is set at zero, you should still feel the same level of resistance on the paper that you did when you were setting the probe Z offset. If not, please repeat the calibration process again. As you can see here, I'm having to make some fine adjustments to make sure that it feels just right. With the firmware we've installed, we can actually adjust the Probe Z offset live while the print is happening. Go to the configuration menu while the print is going, and you can adjust the Probe Z offset from there. That's all there is to it. After this calibration, you will be ready to go.
The BL Touch and Auto Bed Leveling is a great addition to any printer, especially if they have the magnetic style build plate that the Ender 5 has. Happy printing, and as always, we hope you enjoyed this guide.